Today's dedication is for Terax, who gave me a very generous one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon. Kosei is finally on Magic Online, so it's Kosei versus Flame War. Yeah, I just bought the Transformers kit myself on Magic Online, so you might have already seen some of the Transformers um, games by now. I haven't actually recorded any as of this current recording. Don't really have any fast ways of getting our commander out there. We do almost have everything we need, though. Ugh. Yeah, I'll just try it, but it's not really fast enough for my liking. We are on the draw, at least, so we could get into some ramp in the early game. Our opponent doesn't seem to have any fast mana, at least. We managed to make a land ready for likely Sword of the Animus next turn. And now seeing Flame War, Streetwise Operative. So the vehicle version coming down first. And there's a swift foot boot, so that could be good against our opponent. Maybe hold off a turn on our commander so that we can equip it with swift foot boots as soon as it comes out. We'll play that. Just need an aura at this point. So now they can hit us with this and exile the top cards of their library. And then playing out a Braid's Arisen Nightmare. I'm not sure what they're going to want to sacrifice here, to be honest. Yeah, they don't sacrifice anything there. Okay, a Scepter of Celebration, so... Continue to bypass all the ramp and instead get into the more expensive stuff. Let's go for Sword of the Animist. Field of Ruin from our opponent is relevant, although I don't think we really have any decent lands that we really want to protect in this deck. An Academy Manufacturer. And swinging in at us for... that is 6 damage at the moment. This has been transformed into Flame War Brash Veteran. And they've still got 4 cards in hand, so I wouldn't have thought they would want to... Um, get rid of those for the sake of the two cards in exile here. Still not sacrificing with the braids, I wouldn't have thought. Okay, they do decide to get rid of a land, so we'll say no to that. I'm happy to have them draw a card if it means they go down a land. Likely want to start sacrificing artifacts with the Academy Manufacturer at some point. Okay, another land for us, so it's obviously the Kose here. And we're still waiting on an aura here. Uh, we've got a 0-5 with Hexproof in the way at least. Argument to be made for us not going for the Hexproof with Swiftfoot Boots there and just being reactionary with the Snakeskin Veil. But uh, yeah, we got the equipment on there anyway. Just hope they don't have any Edict effects at this point. That is a Captain Lannery Storm, so they're going to start making treasures, food and clue tokens. And that's obviously good with the Braids. Now with this they can't go for the buff at instant speed. It's only at sorcery speed, so we might as well block some commander damage here. And then this transform back into the Streetwise Operative. Braid sacrificed a clue token there. Not sure what happened to the food token, actually. You get a clue, food and treasure token with this. Maybe they cracked it to gain some life. Anyway, going to say no to the Braids once again. Okay, and now seeing a Rexage. So, Rexage onto the Academy Manufacturer sounds like a good idea. That will get a blocker out of the way and it will also um, allow us to equip the Sword of the Animus this turn. So down goes the Academy Manufacturer to the Reclamation Sage and that means that we can block the Lannery Storm quite nicely as well. So we'll just start ramping now and might be able to get down the Scepter of Celebration next turn. Only dealing one point of commander damage here unfortunately. Sol Ring into play. And following that up with a Surly Badger Saw. Sacrificing a Treasure. We'll buff the Captain Lannery Storm, but it won't buff its toughness, just its power. And that allows our opponent into a Cathartic Reunion, so discarded a Crux of Fate and a Loyal Apprentice, which buffs the Surly Badger Saw. And they get to ping the Reclamation Sage out of the way with the Surly Badger Saw, the Hexproof doing us some good here. So now that is 9 points of damage on us. And exiling a further 3 cards with the... Streetwise Operative, transforming the Commander yet again. So once they're down to very few cards in hand, they'll be able to refill quite easily. Sacrifice the Treasure Token to the Braids. Alright, into Thran Power Suit this time. So we've got an equal number of equipments and auras. We're a little bit shy on the plus counters at about 10 plus counter enablers, but... Yeah, just not getting into the auras here, unfortunately. I think we need to start getting blockers, so we'll go for the Scepter of Celebration this turn. And then we're just holding back because we can't get through the 4-4. Um, yeah, just hoping that we can buff our commander enough to actually make the um, Scepter of Celebration relevant at some point this game. They do have Menace and Death Touch on their commander still, so can swing straight through us. 
And then, might be a combat trick here from the Captain Lannery Storm, but we haven't done very well this game anyway, thanks to my poor opening start, and we haven't had the best of draws, so I'll risk blowing up the Captain Lannery Storm. We do successfully do that, so they must have just wanted a treasure. Got a lot of cards in exile now. Going to discard a bunch of cards, so Surly Badger Saw would be fighting and dealing a bunch of damage to creatures if it wasn't for our Hexproof. I'm sure they'll have some reanimation available to them here. There's uh, the Reaver Cleaver, Herald of Anguish, a Villis, Cardur, and a Lightning Greaves. And obviously they went up to nine cards in hand, I think, there, so they've dropped a land, a Reckless Fire Weaver, and there is a Horde Hauler as well. Braid sacrifices a treasure for some more card draw. We go down to seven. And, okay, canopy cover. <laughs> Potentially a little bit too late for that, but, yeah, let's go for it regardless. So we're not going to be able to be blocked here. And that sort of gives, um, sort of gives Hexproof as well, the canopy cover. We'll put a plus counter on our commander with the snakeskin veil. And then we'll draw a few cards and make a few tokens here. Like I said, we've been, it's turn 7 now, we've been way too slow this game, but we got to see the first Transformers card of the channel, I think. Uh, no, we've seen Starscream. Haven't seen Flame War before, though. So because it's enchanted, equipped, and has a plus counter on it, we will draw a bunch of cards, and the Scepter is going to make some, um, some tokens here that we can hopefully chump block with. Alright, and into Keen Sense, the Shadow Spear... Uh, we can drop a land this turn, so I think we're best getting down as many blockers as possible. We'll throw out the Sakura Tribe Elder. Uh, it can be Shadow Spear. Don't think equipping it onto a token would really have been relevant. Could have gained a couple of life, I suppose, whenever the Surly Badger Saw fights. But yeah, it'll just have to be Keen Sense onto our commander. And we assume that we're losing next turn. They do have a 5-5 Trample available to them as well. That is Ugin's Nexus, which I think they can sacrifice with this. Sacrifice another artifact, yeah, so they've got us here, I imagine. One damage to us from the Fire Weaver. Then using the Braids to crew the Horde Hauler. Sacrificing the Ugin's Nexus to put a plus counter on their commander, which does now have Death Touch and Menace. And they get an extra turn after this one, so they'll swing in here, we'll just take the damage. So, like I said before, it's cool to see a Flame War deck. Haven't seen one before. And we got to see a little bit of what we want to do with our commander in this game, right at the end there. But way too slow, so we'll have to try another game. Facing off against the Ur Dragon this time, and the exact opposite problem now. We've got auras and no equipment. But we're on the draw, so we'll keep that one. Draw into a Cultivate, which we can get down on turn 2, so just drop a Forest. Sending Light and Shooter during the main phase for our opponent, so probably goes for Fast Mana, and that is a Sol Ring. So we know what they're drawing into next turn. And there we go, we've got an Equipment and a Plus Counter now, so definitely want to ramp into our Commander. We'll go Cultivate, and the Ur Dragon gets down an Ancient Tomb of his own, which takes him into the Sol Ring, so he needs to start making a bunch of Coloured Mana, that is a Vanquisher's Banner, three cards left in hand. And it would be nice for us to get into some form of protection, Hexproof. We're a couple of turns away from getting down our Kose and the Bear Umbra in one turn, so I think we just risk getting down the Kose here. And then for the sake of mana efficiency, we'll play out the Ring of Colonia. And then next turn we'll be able to go for the Bear Umbra, equip this, and then the turn after will be looking pretty good. Should be able to equip the Sixth Sense next turn and... We will have power on the Kose, thanks to the Bear Umbra, so might be able to draw a card. Depends if our opponent gets down a big scary dragon. Well, they're missing double red, so any damage dealing dragons aren't likely to be able to come down here. They are holding up Cyclonic Rift mana though, which is annoying. Time will tell if they've got that or not though. Okay, Skyshroud claim is tempting. So we could attempt the Bear Umbra here, which will hopefully allow us to untap all of our lands. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's equip the ring, throw on the sixth sense so that we can draw a card. And we're not going to draw cards to our Kose, unfortunately. Our opponent is stopping during the beginning of combat, but allowing us to swing in, so it's not likely that we'll see a Cyclonic Rift. Maybe they want to do it at the end of our turn. That might be a more effective 
means of using it. So we do draw a card thanks to the aura and that gets us into scavenger ground so we'll bring in a couple of untapped lands with the sky shroud claim and I'm best holding on to the forced adaptation I think because we've already got a means of um, an equipment and a plus counter on our commander so we'll just hold it there. Seeing a Magda Brazen Outlaw which is unusual would have thought in an Ur Dragon deck they just want to ramp like crazy and hard cast the dragons. So getting a plus counter on our commander here, the Yavamaya is going to be handy with the Ancient Tomb, so we're not taking as much damage. So uh, yeah, we'll go for the swing in now I think. Argument to be made for is going Soul's Majesty first I suppose. Not sure if my opponent's going to want to block with the Magda or not, so we untap the lands which we're not really making use of all this mana, which we maybe should be. Okay, they allow us to hit, so we'll draw three cards. And we'll draw another one from the Sixth Sense. So probably would have had too many cards in hand here anyway. So I'll drop the Avamaya. Um, Hydra's Growth is okay, I think. That will be more damage, more commander damage, obviously. We've already got them at five. And the Thran Power Suit is nice as well with the Ward 2. So play that down as another equipment. Then Hydra's Growth will start doubling the counters on our commander and make it a big threat. And the play really here is to go for blowing up the Sol Ring, but I think I'll go after the Vanquisher's Banner instead. I think there's slightly less chance that my opponent scoops. And that is a cast trigger, so I'll do it now before they even cast a dragon. Okay, Heroic Intervention, good to get that out of their hand. We're in the realms of drawing a lot of cards here now, so I don't really mind them keeping the Vanquisher's Banner, to be honest. A Felwar Stone will only tap for green mana, they've got plenty of that thanks to our Yavamaya. Looks like they are pretty screwed on colours here. Deciding to hold back the Magda, we do have Trample on our commander now. Um, oh, and I put those on the stack in the wrong order. Should have gone Hydra's Growth first and then put the um, Ring of Colonia, have that uh, resolve first. Because it would obviously double more counters that way, but yeah, up to 12 points of commander damage potentially. So it doesn't necessarily matter. That is a Mask of Memory, so yeah, let's go for a land... We'll play Mask of Memory now, and our opponent tapping out, showing us that he doesn't have anything, I think. Equip Mask of Memory for more card draw, and then we'll go for the Soul's Majesty for the fun of it. That is 13 cards we're going to draw. Um, might as well throw out the Soul Ring here, I think. And the Trailblazer's Boots. We're going to untap our lands when we swing in, of course. So swing in for 13 points of commander damage. We don't quite have our opponent yet. But we're going to draw way more cards, so that is 14 cards we draw here. And then, yeah, Mask of Memory takes us up to 16 cards drawn. So draw two and discard, just get rid of a forest. And then, yep, the Snakeskin Veil is good. Probably getting down the Hammer of Nizan is a good idea. And that does make our commander indestructible, as well as getting free equips. So, uh, yeah, I think we just pass at that. Might as well throw down the jeweled lotus actually there's some things we can throw down here so that we're not discarding quite as much play out the allosaurus shepherd play the emerald medallion and yeah i think we will leave it there at this point kind of just discarding a bunch of cards at random there um open up the graveyard you can have a look through there if you want to and yeah our opponent has really struggled on mana this game um Argument to be made for swinging in with the Magda if they're not going to block with it would have made them treasure tokens. But yeah, this game obviously won't count. Um, again, putting the triggers on the stack incorrectly. But we'll just swing in at our opponent and put him out of his misery. Yeah, we're now seeing uh, why my opponent actually played it out. He is a viewer of the channel, so a massive thank you to my opponent for not only watching the channel, but actually allowing us to get a game in here in which someone didn't scoop on us. Wasn't a particularly fair game, like I said, but we did get to see what Kose can do when things go quite well, so we'll play another one, see if we can get a fair game in. Kose versus Chandra Fire of Kaladesh with a two lander and a Sol Ring. Uh, we've got an equipment, but no means of an aura or a plus counter. We'll keep it anyway, we're on the draw. Magic Online will not stop giving me Soul's Majesty. There is something wrong with the Shuffler on Magic Online, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Who says there's nothing wrong with it? Alright, there's an aura in sixth sense, so we just need a means of a plus counter now. Throw down the Sol Ring. We actually don't have double green now, I'm just noticing. 
So, uh, yeah, anyway, getting down the Prowler's Helm, our opponent played Dragon Rage's Channeler. Then Chandra's Regulator. And they surveil a Chandra ablaze into the bin. Okay, Alpha Authority, so... Yeah, being punished for not having double green here, we'll play out the Allosaurus Shepherd. Might as well put the equipment on that, just in case we do want to swing in. Uh, it might be that we have to go for the Alpha Authority onto the Allosaurus Shepherd. Just so that we can get the um, Devotion up for green and go for the Nykthos for the double green instead. So Chandra, Fire of Kaladesh into play. Alright, excellent draw into a land off the top, which is what we needed. So uh, yeah, we'll just have to hope our opponent can't deal 5 damage to our Kosei. And then we'll equip the Prowler's Helm onto our commander. Could have swung in with the Allosaurus Shepherd first, but I don't think the one damage is going to matter. So the Chandra going to deal damage to us by tapping down. Following that up with a Lightning Bolt, they're down to three cards in hand. And then tapping down the Chandra again. Then casting a Goblin Welder untaps the Chandra once again, and they Bolt us once again, so transforming it into Chandra Roaring Flame. Then activating the ability of a Chandra with the Chandra's Regulator, we'll copy it, so two damage to a player or Planeswalker, we're down to 28 from the Burn player. And we really need a means of buffing our commander at this point. Drop the Avamaya is fine. So we're not struggling at all on green mana at this point. So let's put Sixth Sense onto our commander. Then we'll go for Alpha Authority onto our commander as well. So hopefully they can't target it and get rid of our commander. And yeah, we're really desperate for some power here. Because we can't deal any damage with the Sixth Sense. Because this thing doesn't have any power. It's the worst thing about this commander. Don't know if I'm really... I had high hopes for Kosei, but I don't know if I like it, to be honest. There's just too many hoops to jump through with it. You need to give it some power. You need to put a counter on it. You need an aura. You need an equipment. You, and this is all before you can even swing in and start drawing cards. And then, of all this stuff that you actually have, you still might not be able to swing in because you don't have any kind of evasion. So, yeah, it's a tricky one, really. The uh, Jeweled Lotus coming down from our opponent and... Mox Opal will be online thanks to the uh, Metal Craft. They discarded a card to the Regulator, uh, discarded a Mountain, and that drew them into Koth of the Hammer. So animating a Mountain into a 4-4. And they cannot pay for the Regulator with the Chandra, so just dealing two damage to us with that. Then this now has Flying, so swinging in with a 3-3 Flyer. Okay, disappointingly just drawing into a land, so... Eh... Probably not going to do anything this game. We'll swing in at our opponent with the Allosaurus Shepherd here. And we'll just have to draw with the Hunter's Might. So casting Hunter's Insight to draw a single pathetic card. And alright, clearing a land off the top at least. Put the uh, Prowler's Helm back on our commander. Thaumatic Compass from our opponent. And then it's two damage from the Chandra again. And I think they did pay into that. Off the Chandra's Regulator, so swinging in with this again, they've animated a mountain with the Koth, and they stand to get an emblem with that next turn. And Blast Zone just wipes out a bunch of our stuff, we're still hoping for... We've got an Aura and an Equipment still, we just need a plus counter. Alright, Snakeskin Veil, we're only going to draw one card from this, but at least we'll somewhat be online. So let's just, out of curiosity, we'll ignore the Commanders, ignore the Planeswalkers, and see what card we draw into. Okay, that's an E-Witness, so... I think we throw out the E-Witness here. Eternal Witness grabs us back the Sixth Sense. We've been way too slow this game, so I doubt it's going to make a blind bit of difference. Chandra can deal six damage to us here. And the Koth can Limit Break as well. We'll get an Emblem from the Chandra. And they can copy with the Chandra's Regulator. This is an interesting game to show, nonetheless. So it's 12 damage from the Burn player. We get two emblems, thanks to that being copied. And then Koth, another emblem, so we can take four. And is this during our upkeep? Yes, at the beginning of your upkeep you get a lightning bolt, so that's us done. We'll take the damage here and try and see what we would have been drawing into. Yeah, we got into some card draw in the next couple of turns, but yeah, just way too slow for us. Still no means of buffing our commander. I mean, the Hammer of Nizam would have done a little bit of a buff, but... Yeah, not good enough. I'm going to give it one more shot. Kosei versus Yarrick. This time with... I don't know what is with this deck and not being able to get into early mana. 
Yeah, I mean, we're just forced to try that, really. Okay, well, apparently bitching about it allows you to actually draw into some ramp in this deck, so uh, we will uh, go for casting the Mana Crypt, and we'll get down the Thran Power Soup. Lotus Cobra, so likely a powerful landfall Yarrick deck. Typical type of Yarrick deck that you see on here. And then we draw into a Yavimaya. Don't want to fix my opponent's green mana if I can help it, so... We're just going in for the Kosei here and waiting for my opponent to get down a Flashbag Marauder type effect. A Mosswarp Bridge. Yep, that bitching really paid off. Nature's Law we draw into here, so drop a land. Uh, we definitely want Ward on our commander. And then we can't go for Invigorating Surge and the Sixth Sense, unfortunately, so... So it'll have to be the Nature's Law, and then we'll drop the Sixth Sense and likely draw a card here because I doubt our opponent's going to block with the Lotus Cobra. So the Sixth Sense does allow us to draw a card. We do get through the Lotus Cobra, and there is another equipment for us, the Scepter of Celebration. I think we're really focusing on Invigorating Surge next turn and getting a plus counter on our commander. Our opponent's got three green pieces of mana here, so I doubt it'll matter if we get down the Avamaya next turn. So there we see Yarrick the Desecrated, and then they hit us for two with the Lotus Cobra. So some means of evasion would be really nice at this point. Okay, well, another land for us might as well drop that because, like I said, the Avamaya might help them in some way. Now we could go for the Scepter of Celebration and encourage them to block with the Yarrick. I doubt they're going to block with Yarrick. Yeah, the problem is the Invigorating Surge doesn't allow us enough power to actually get rid of the Yarrick here. So we're forced to go for the Scepter of Celebration and hold back a turn, unfortunately. So I doubt my opponent will be blocking here, but we might be able to trade commanders and buy a bit of time. If we hit, then we'll draw and we'll make some 1-1 tokens as well. And obviously we're landing commander damage here. Okay, they do decide to trade us. Four cards in their hand. So they might have a fetch next turn that they can get out their commander with. We do lose our aura there, unfortunately. But while we don't have a means of evasion, flying or anything like that, there's not really anything we can do against them. Not going to be able to draw any cards with our commander. Another tap land, that is a guild gate. So we need another aura at this point. If they get an untapped land into play next turn, they can replay the Yarrick again. Okay, a Kalni ambush for us, so drop the Avamaya, we'll go for our commander. Okay, and they do have an Arcane Denial, so that will cantrip them, it will draw us a couple of cards as well. So buying themselves a bit more time here. Um, not going to play out the Carly Ambush as a land. I think we'll hold on to it for uh, getting rid of the Lotus Cobra. Although I think the damage might have been done with that already. We draw during the upkeep, during their upkeep. And that clears a couple of lands off the top. Phyrexian Revoker this time. Likely going on the Thram Power Suit, I would have thought. So maybe fight that out of the way instead. No, it's Mana Crypt they've chosen instead. And yeah, typical lands matter it is Field of the Dead. Uh, they're one land away from that at the moment. Not getting their commander into play yet at least. Okay, a Shadow Spear for some Trample. Already got Trample available to us, but the lifelink might be relevant. So we just have to tap out into our commander and wait for them to counter this. Three cards in their hand, and the Kosei comes down. So uh, yeah, likely have to fight the Phyrexian Revoker next turn. It is an untapped land that they play, so Lotus Cobra triggers, the Field of the Dead triggers as well. <laughs> and an Agent of Treachery. Yeah, I give up with this deck. I have literally put hours and hours into this video now, and I can't get Kosei to actually do anything. Um, in a multiplayer deck in which you are going really slow and it's a casual kitchen table game and you turns typically go over the 10 mark, you know, uh, then maybe you can do something with Kosei, but there's just way too many hoops to jump through for this, I think. I think a way better commander in this ilk is Wilson. It's cheaper, it already has a bunch of keywords written on it, and you've got a background available to you as well, so, whereas this thing just comes down and sits there like a big dumb idiot, so, yeah, I, I just don't, I'm actually quite disappointed with this commander, because I had high hopes for it, but... Turns out it's just way too many hoops to jump through, so yeah, we just sit here and do nothing by the looks of it. Might as well throw out the Shadow Spear. Our opponent puts Swiftfoot Boots on our commander so we can't get it back, and 
Hopefully they can kill us next turn. Try and lose this Mana Crypt flip. We do not. And it's a land. Yep, can't get us this turn unfortunately. Come on Mana Crypt, put us out of our misery. There we go. Yeah, so the problem with this is as soon as you see the smallest bit of interaction, it just totally undoes all your previous turns. You've put mana into equipping it up and then you've put a card and some mana into putting a plus counter on it. You've put a card and mana into putting an aura on it. And then all someone has to do is throw a doom blade in its general direction and or, or wipe the board or something. And yeah, you've lost cards, you've lost time, you've lost mana. Uh, yeah, really disappointing. I was hoping for a lot from Kosei, but yeah, just couldn't get it to do anything. It's very disappointing. If it's in a slower meta where your turns go north of 10, like I said before, then yeah, you should be able to do something with it. But apart from that, it's really not good in my estimation. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.